All right, so I'm going to solve a question. This is, will be the last question of the conservation of mass. I'll be blunt before I start this question. This will be probably the hardest question you can ever ask from the conservation of mass principle, okay? And I would say majority of the books don't have this detailed of a question. So don't freak out if you feel it's a little bit harder to conceptually understand. So here's what the question says. I have a 2 meter diameter water tank over here. And I'm filling this up, as you can see, I'm filling this up by water. This uh, purple color is water. And the inlet um, volumetric flow rate is given as 6 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cube per second. And I gave you the outlet as well, 5 times 10 to the minus 4, just like a drain. So I'm adding water over here, but I'm extracting over here. As you can see, this number is smaller than this number. So what does this indicate is as the time goes on, the water level in this tank is going to go up, right? So the question is, uh, an easier version of the question can ask, what is the rate of change of mass? And I will also answer that, but I'll actually take a step above it, and I'm going to ask you, what is the velocity? You see, this is going up and up, right? So what is that velocity? What's the velocity of the level of water rising in the tank? All right, let's get to business. And I will actually demonstrate two alternative approaches and both obviously will end up with the same number okay all right so the, in the first approach what I do is I'm gonna pick a control volume like this I'm gonna take the entire thing okay I simply go out and take this whole thing like that it's going out the whole thing the next step is to write the assumptions and assumptions are gonna be like this is this steady Okay, so the question will depend on how you take your control volume. So in this case, think about it. Is this steady? Oh no, this is going up, right? So this is not steady. I cannot say steady, all right? The second one is, is this constant density? Yeah, this is water, so it's gonna be constant density. Is this uniform flow? Oh yeah, I wasn't given enough information about the velocity profile in my inlets and exits. In fact, I was just, I didn't even given the area in here, right? I'm just given the volumetric flow rate. Okay, fine. With these two assumptions, let me start by the very general formula, the very generic formula that we start off with. Triple integral over the control volume, rho d volume plus over the control surface, rho v dotted with n dA is equal to zero. Okay, now first question. Can I simply get, get out of this uh, term? Um, yeah, that would be a major mistake. No, not really, so I will stick to it. But let me ask you a question. Look at this density. Density is a constant. Can I take it over here? No, oh, yeah, right? Can I take it over here? Oh yeah, it's just two, right? Because integral of 2x is equal to 2 times integral of x. How about the derivative? Or the partial is the same, right? It's the same logic. So I can take it all the way to the outside of it. So it, I will write like this rho times. Now, let's write it. Then I'll do one more step. Del del t of triple integral of d volume. What is this? What will be the triple integral of d volume? If you think about the Cartesian, it's going to be dx times dy times dz. So then if I take the integral, it's going to be x times y times c. What is x times y times c? It's the volume. So then let's write it one more step. From here, I'm going to get this row, del volume, del t. Okay? So this is the first term that I obtained so far. Okay? And let's go to the second term. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about this um, integral anymore because it's uniform, right? As you remember, when I had a uniform, this turned out to be summation sign. But also, I have one inlet, and I have one ex exit. So I don't even need to put myself through the summation sign. So, okay, then let's write it this way. Rho, del V, del T, plus rho exit, V exit, A exit, minus rho inlet, V inlet, A inlet, will be equal to zero. So do I need to really distinguish between the row exit and row inlet? No, not really, right? It's a constant. So I'm going to actually simply go ahead and 
don't make that distinction anymore. Okay, I was given the volumetric flow rate. Do you know that the volumetric flow rate is V times A? Right, so this was given as 5 to the minus 4 meter cube per second, and this was given as 6 times 10 to the minus 4, 4 meter cube per second. Okay, so I when I was beginning the question, I told you that, hey, the easier method of this question is to ask you, what is the rate of change of mass within my control volume? What is rho times V? Because I can simply go ahead and, you know, now I prefer to put it in. What is rho times V? Mass. So this becomes dm dt, right? So then if I ask you, what is the rate? So this will be dm dt. I'm assuming mass is only a function of time. Uh, otherwise, I should write the partials. But that will be just fine. If I ask this question to you, then you will simply go out and say to me that it's going to be rho times, well, if I move this here, 10 to minus 4, right? Meter cube per second over here. And this is kilogram per meter cube, right? So from here, if it is 1,000, let's say this is 1,000 density of water, right? Right around there. So 10 to the 3, 10 to the minus 4. So it will become 0 0.1 kilogram per second, okay? If I was asking you what is the rate of change of mass, this is your answer. I will go back to here, and can I get rid of the densities as they are constant? Yeah, I will. Okay, so you can see from here that I get myself del v del t becomes six times ten to the minus four minus five times ten to the minus four. That becomes ten to the minus four meter cube per second. So this is how much my volume is increasing in my control volume now but I wasn't really being asked what is the volume change it's about the velocity or the speed so for that is I'm gonna say that this height that I have in my tank at this given moment is h so this h is a variable and what will be the velocity of this increasing this way that's the rate of change of h right with respect to time so my dh dt will be what I'm asking you in the question. Is this clear? H is increasing. I'm asking you how does it change over time because distance divided by time is the velocity. All right, so I'm going to need this. So let's over here. This will be 1 minus H. As you will see soon, I will need this. So I want to put it up there. Okay, good. Let's go down. So now let's write my volume. Um, one thing is I'm going to neglect the effect of air over here. You see this whole thing is uh, also over here is air, right? But it's not going to change the analysis at all. So I'm not going to do that. What's the volume over here? So it's going to be, I'm going to call this um, volume 1. I'm going to call this volume 2. And I'm going to simply sum them up. Like I said, I'm going to neglect the effect of gas. It's not a biggie. It will be fine. So then if I write this, it's going to be del del t of v1 plus v2 will be equal to 10 to the minus 4. So let's write it. So it's going to be del del t of v1 will be, well, the diameter was 2 meters. So this is going to be pi r square times h, right? That will be the v1 for me. And the v2 will be, let's take a look. I don't remember. Okay, so the diameter of that will be 0 0.1 meter and the height is 1 minus h right so i'm just gonna, just gonna write that plus this is volume one this is volume one let's write volume two that's going to be pi 0 0.05 right that 0 0.1 was the diameter 0 0.05 is the radius pi r squared times this time h is 1 minus h right the height of that is that Okay, so now I'm looking at how this changes over time. Um, one more step. So I'm going to take out the pi's, pi, and I'm going to write this ddt, okay, because it's simply only parameter that impacts the h is at this point is time. So it's going to be d, dt of, so this becomes h, this becomes 0 0.05 square minus 0 0.05 square times h, right? And this whole thing will be equal to 10 to the minus 4. 
So obviously I'm going to move this pi to the other side of the equation. So it's going to be d dt of, take a look in here. This is going to be 0, so this is 5 to the minus 2, so it's going to be 25 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, should I go even say that? But I will, okay, h minus 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 h plus 0 0.05 square is equal to 10 to the minus 4. So I'm going to simply say that, you know, this is kind of negligible, so this will be dh dt, I will simply neglect that. And then what is the derivative of a constant number? It is zero. So then that, that drops out, right? So then what did I left with? On the right hand side, I got 10 to the minus four divided by pi. So this is the answer. This is the velocity that it's going up with. And this is gonna be meter per second as the unit. So I said that there will be two methods and I will get the same number as I'm reporting over here, right? So let's look at the second method. And in order to do that, I actually went ahead to save time, have the same uh, question. What will be different over here is, this time around, I'm gonna select my control volume like this. I'm not gonna take the whole thing, okay? Like this. So now this time around, what will happen over here? Okay, note this. Now this will be steady. At the beginning of this question, I asked, is this unsteady or steady? In this case, it's gonna be steady. What I mean is this. Let me see. This is a little bit harder to explain. I, I, I do admit that, okay? So there's an inlet over here. So let's actually go ahead and write over here. There's an inlet over here. There's an exit over there. And the cues are given to me for those cases. And actually, there is a third exit from the control volume. What is the third exit? Think about it. This uh, purple color line is going out, right? So it's going up because of this velocity that I have, right? It's being filled, this container is being filled. So then this section that I have over here and over here will be another exit. So this will be like one inlet and two exit kind of situation. And it's gonna be steady because I'm only looking at this orange dotted line. I don't really care whether this, this is going up and up and up. I'm not looking here. My eye is focused to this orange line. As far as our orange line is concerned, I am steady. All right. So hopefully this makes sense. But I get myself, you know, let's call this one, let's call this two, let's call this three. So then if I write my assumptions for this particular case, is this going to be steady? As I said, for this Control volume, yeah, it is going to be steady. Is this going to be constant density? Oh, yeah, it is water, right? How about uniform flow? Yeah, it's the same as the first one. Remember, for the first question, I take this for the entire thing, right? So whether I take for that large control volume or small control volume, the final result will not change. Okay. So with these three assumptions, my equation is going to look like this. So that will be one of the easier ones. So it's going to be over the exits, V exit A exit will be equal to over the inlets, V inlet, A inlet. So when I look at the exits, I have two of them. So that's going to be V2 A2 plus V3 A3 will be equal to V1 A1. So what is V times A? That is volumetric flow rate, right? So that is given to me as 6 times 10 to the minus 4. And this is 5 times 10 to the minus 4. So from here then, your V3, A3 will be, you can see from here, you get your V3, A3 will be equal to, well, 10 to the minus 4, right? The subtraction between those two numbers. So now the question is, what is V3? It's actually similar to the first approach. I will call this H, it's going to be dH dt, right? So it's going to be very similar to the first approach. And what is the area? Okay, so if I look at it, it's going to be this whole area minus this area. Make sense? Because that's what the exit is. It's going up, it's going up over here. So let's write it then. It's going to be pi, diameter is 2 meters. So the radius is 1 eh, 
square minus the diameter is 0 0.1 meters so the radius is 0 0.05 square and this will be equal to 10 to the minus 4 okay so I can move pi out of over here so this is going to be pi times dh dt e, 1 minus 0 0.05 square is equal to 10 to the minus 4 and then the hdt will be equal to do you see it's exactly the same as the previous one this look at it let's go up to the first approach so i didn't write it clearly but you can see over here so this is 1 times h dh dt times 0 0.05 square times right so it's exactly the same there's no difference between those two approaches and what i'm going to do is if you think about it this will be 25 times 10 to the minus 4 is exactly the same and i'm simply going to neglect that so i'm going to get the h dt is equal to 10 to the minus 4 divided by pi let's not forget the pi i need to move it down here right and so the final answer will be meter per second okay so let's go up here we see it's exactly the same 10 to the minus 4 divided by pi now I'm not gonna pretend that that was an easy question okay this is one of the harder questions that I've solved from the conservation of mass equation